There's Chef Chris in our kitchen here in Boulder Creek, California. Hey, Chef Chris. Hey, how are you? Doing well. Looking at all your whole setup here. Mm-hmm. What's going on over here? Uh, we got the layout for, we're going to do falafel, mm -hmm. hummus, and tzatziki. Okay. Very cute. We are quarantine style, so we're doing canned garbanzo. Okay. We got two cans that have been strained out and just chilling without any liquid for a couple days, getting dried out a little bit more. I got my garbanzo beans. Food processor key. At work, food, our food processors are way nicer and do a better job, so to speak, because we have to get, make it somewhat perfect each time. I wanted to make it at home because you're at home and I'm at home, so might as well make it at home. So, there'll be a recipe on the bottom of the page that you can follow. But that's roughly one can. There was two cans in here. And I want to go a little parsley. It's been washed and rinsed already. Washed and rinsed it earlier and then put it in here. Since this food processor is good, but not it's, not, it's not really nice. I mean, it's nice. It's not a Roboku like we have at work. I'm going to cut up the parsley a little bit. You see, you just lightly chopped it there. Yep. Just a little rough chop. I'm going to grab roughly the same amount of cilantro. Oh, I love it. For what we're doing, we just need a little rough chop. Can you tell us a little bit about that glove you're wearing? Yeah, it's a cut glove. Hmm. What's it's, that do? I used to hate them. I thought they were the stupidest idea on the face of the earth. But then I cut my finger off a couple times. Oh. So, you kind of, you know. And then wearing one, I didn't cut my finger off. Mm -hmm. So, I've, I've gotten to the point that I use it at home. I have to use it at work. So, I use it at home just so I'm just used to it. It's kind of like, I, I've been relating it to other people. It's kind of like the mask smell. I wear the mask when I'm by myself in my office, in my car, wherever I go. Sometimes at home, you can ask my wife, I have it on. It's, what, if you use it enough times, you'll get used to it and it'll be like, no big deal. Mm. And that's kind of how the cut glove was. You know, for years I opposed it, and then I finally started using it. Plus it makes something like this, like, this was always so tedious to do. Mm -hmm pre-cut glove days because you're holding your hand right here and you're putting the knife right to it. It's the best way to dice an onion. What are the cut gloves made with? Uh, I don't know. How dare you? They, they, <laughs> <laughs> they stopped me from getting cut. That's all I need to know. Okay. Okay, I got a little bit more onion than I need, but I'm making other stuff so I can use the onion elsewhere. I just put this over here and pour some other stuff I want really, really small. So I have to go boom, boom, boom. And as small as you want to go, you Can you just buy cut gloves like on Amazon? Yes, that's I actually that's where I buy mine because my hands were frostbit when I was a child and are extremely small and I have a hard time finding cut gloves from normal vendors that fit. Like technically most places a green cut glove is like a lot bigger. Mm. It generally goes by color. And cool. then, of course, wear a normal glove over it. Aha. Uh -huh. Yeah. Like so. Well, you know, you practice the same safety things at home. It makes it way easier at work. All right, so that's good. We've got our onion, we got our cilantro, we have our parsley. We need some garlic. Well, here's the thing. <laughs> here's the thing. I, you've tried to show me. But show you what? How to 
mince it. Oh, that's easy. We will we will show you right now. Okay. And the key is to get that little nub. It's like a small version of what's on top of the onion. All right, my name's Chris. Going to show us how to mince garlic. Garlic. Okay, so we have the knife on the top. We smash it. Let's see how it looks. We'll see how it looks. Mm -hmm. It looks the same as it did before. Yeah, it's it's much flatter. Okay. And then we're going to take a little bit of the salt and pepper. We're going to put it on it. It's just like putting sugar on fruit. So now we're going to hold the other knife, nice sharp knife. Normally we wouldn't need to mince it for that, but you know, you want to see it. I did. So there you go. Thank you. We need a little baking powder, BP, double acting. A little bit of our seasoned flour. Got our top. Here we go. Ooh, listen to it. It's the difference between ours at work and what we have at home. Because at home, like this doesn't even come close to me. Do you want to cry? Like, it's not sharp. I know. The one at work? Oh. It's scary how sharp it is. You need a cut glove to clean it. So, that is always the dilemma. So it just takes a little bit longer. You're very patient. We have our deep fryer. Okay, very nice. And I actually have an extra onion out because I will make you some onion fries. <gasps> Wow, well, the fryer is on. That's love. So, might as well use it. We're just going to continue to mix oh. this by hand. Very nice. It looks beautiful. It smells good, too. It looks aromatic. But oh, wait, until please. the oil is hot, we can't test, test it. We make tzatziki that goes with our falafel. So I have just standard plain yogurt. Plain old yogurt. Is it full fat? Uh, full milk? Uh, yeah. Ooh. But it doesn't matter. You use whatever yogurt you like, you have. Okay. Since it's just you and I, that's probably more than enough. And it is so simple. It's like the simplest thing on the planet. So here's some of the onion we did a little bit earlier. Sprinkle, sprinkle, sprinkle. We're going to take some mint. So let's say one sprig. This you do need to take each leaf off. It's not like the falafel and the cilantro where you can just go for it. This one you have to pick, but it's worth it. And we already washed all these. Yep. They're looking good. Do it as soon as we get home because... I know. Of the times we are in. So let's roll it up a little bit. Okay. Makes it easier. Just chopping it up really fine. What I always tell people is cut it up as fine as you can go. Mm, it's good enough. Oh, it smells so good. It does. So that's all we needed of that. I'm put that over there. And we got a little bit of dill. It dried nicely. Put it up, pop off the top. Okay, that smells really good. And again, we're gonna... We're switching hands. Yeah. Got it. Guys, those hurt. Oh, yeah, got it. Hurt. Got it. Okay. We're gonna use this guy real quick. Oh, 
thought we lost our ring. Good. It really smells good. Any other spices oh. with this, Chef Chris? No. Not yet. It's really simple. Yeah. Oh, uh, well, this is why we're intertwining the videos because this is how we actually work at work. Meaning, you'll be doing one thing and Basically, change, change, change your glove and hop to another thing. So now the oil is hot enough. So we want to grab a ball of the falafel. Okay. Do like a half. This is just to taste. Taste everything. That's how I was taught. Taste. Every single thing you make. Whisk. This is just the, oh, it's just a regular whisk, okay. Yep. Oh, we're gonna burn the little test block. Nice. <laughs> well, do I, it's only a test. That's right. That chef. More salt. Mm. This is plain yogurt. Is that kosher? Yes. The best. Does it take longer to mix because it's a larger grain? That's why you crush it in your, in your finger food. That's good. Of course, this is way overcooked, but. Well. For being extremely overcooked, it's actually really good. So <laughs> if it wasn't overcooked, it'd probably be spot on. Looking good, Tzatziki. Ooh, what's that? That is something that is just being, since we're making our dinner right now, more than this is just a falafel, hummus, and all that demo <laughs> we're making pita <gasps> but right now we're getting into the hummus and this is the tahini which the most toughest part about tahini is getting it out of the vessel and it comes in <laughs> so the the hummus it's actually our camera lady's recipe, just altered to, but in essence, it's the same. So one can of garbanzo without juice, one can with juice. We used to use like a lemon. Uh, salt. Lemon salt. We just changed it to a lemon. Cut the ends off and cut the skin off really easily. For some, like you. Yeah. And see if you can find the seeds. Cause not that they won't puree up, but you know, can just get them out. Just drop that in there. Since we have this onion, we're just gonna use it up since it's here. And that's basically how I do a lot of stuff. That's too much onion, so we won't add that. But whatever we have, we use. So we're going to use this tahini, which is for making the hummus. Like I said, the hardest part is getting the tahini out of the container. It's clingy. <laughs> yeah, very clingy. Hmm. All right, so we have that in there. I like avocado oil. All right, so we have all our ingredients. The Vitamix. Now, me personally, I've never made it this way, but there's a 
first time for everything. That is the way. Considering we used to spend like 45 right? minutes in, in an actual robot. This is so group. much better. Nice. I scoop it out. Just make a little football. Drop them in our oil. There's one that's part cooked. I like to start them in the fryer and finish them in the oven. If you cook them all the way in the fryer, you, you'll see places that cook them all the way in the fryer and you get them and they're like black chunks. Yes, they're delicious on the inside. But they don't look appealing whatsoever. So we have them in our fryer. Try and get them a little bit of color. Mm -hmm. right, that one's got good color. Basically, you just want them to hold them shape. And, uh, if you do have a deep fryer handy all the time, there's a lot of stuff you can do where you just start it in the deep fryer and finish it in the oven. Prime example, meatballs. Oh, yeah, pita, homemade pita there on the other side there. That looks amazing, Chef Chris. We'll, we'll, set up, we'll set up another one. Mm -hmm. A simple dough. Let's see that. It's just yeast, oil, sugar, salt, flour. Oh, a little honey. Not No sugar. I used honey. Because my baby don't like sugar. She doesn't. So that, does the honey make it rise? The honey has helped activate the yeast. Yeast, yeah. Okay. All right, so we're doing plate up. And like I said, since I have a deep fryer going, I make some onions for my wife. It takes cook them off while the oven. Yeah, a little rice. The other pita. Crazy. Fresh baked pita, folks. Got them there. See if you want the top. Don't want any on the outer edge. Well, isn't that a beautiful meal? But wait, there's more. Oh, hummus. Come to mama. No, you don't see it. Just because I was taught everything's odd numbers. It's really hard doing two falafels instead of three. So here's our finished plate. We have the hummus. We have the falafel and the little pita that I was making already. Because like I said, this is our dinner tonight. Uh, tzatziki, falafel, pita, hummus, onion, rice, garnish. Looks beautiful. Thanks, Chef Chris.